you're new here, my name is Zoe and it is lovely to meet you. This is my space where I like to talk about the fiber arts projects that I'm working on. Mainly that's knitting, crochet, spinning, and a little bit of yarn dyeing. And of course, if you're a returning viewer, you would already know that, but <laughs> welcome back to you guys as well. If you would like to find me on social media, I am at Zoe Nichols, K-N-I-T-C-H-O-L-S. That's on Instagram and Ravelry. And I do have hand dyed yarn that is on Etsy under Felicity Yarn Studio. So I hope that everyone is doing well. Thank you so much to everyone who um, commented on the giveaway that I had on the last kind of sit down show and tell episode. I will be drawing a winner for that at the end of this episode. So stay tuned. And yeah, I've been doing a lot of making and feeling really creative since I returned home from vacation two weeks ago. I'm going to share some of that with y'all today. Some of it I can't share because um, I'm doing a lot of yarn dyeing for advent calendars, but I've also been really into spinning. I don't know, just kind of all over the place, but in a really good way. For whatever reason, being all over the place really fulfills me creatively. I know that makes some people crazy and I've tried to be monogamous over the years, but I don't know. I just like to have like six projects surrounding me at all times. Now, before I dive into all of that, just a quick apology up front if you guys can hear some like trucks and chainsaws and things going on outside. They are almost done with the one house that they started a few months ago, but they've started clearing another lot directly across my street. And um, again, it's great for property values and for the economy around here. However, um, it did kind of break my heart to see like all these trees just get completely mowed down. It is what it is, but I would just like for them to be done making noise constantly. Sorry for that minor rant. Let us move on to the making. So the first thing that I have been working on is my Battenberg blanket. And this is a pattern by Sandra Paul of the Cherry Heart podcast. Now this probably doesn't look like I've made a ton of progress since the last time you guys saw this. I have joined a couple more squares but I did a square count right before I came up here and I have about 120 squares altogether and I, I'm aiming for 350-ish. I don't remember the exact number for um, the dimensions that I'm going for. Yes, all the ones with all the ends hanging loose. Those are all the ones that have been added since the last time you guys saw this. So I'm getting there, I'm making some progress and this is for my nephew who is about two months old now. I do think I will be able to get this done at least by Christmas time, but I'm hoping before then. I have been kind of keeping it laid out on the coffee table with a couple of squares placed where I want to go next. So that's good motivation for me to um, every once in a while make a white square and then join the colored squares around it. I'm really pleased with how this is coming along and I was thinking the other day <laughs> if I get to the point where I just don't think I can make any more squares or you know kind of tired of joining them I can always just make it however big and then crochet a border around it but I think I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna keep powering through. I'm gonna take a picture of it kind of laid out so you can kind of see what my process is there as far as picking the next color. I'm really just kind of going with whatever looks nice next to each other. There's not a, a whole lot of um, thought process in that. So yeah, that is coming along. So for the second thing that I wanted to share here with you guys, if you are unfamiliar with Naomi's channel, that is my sister. Um, she is the yarn curator and she and I are running a steak along. So this is my first time doing steaks. Um, I know that she has done them once or twice before. And we are both knitting the Woodlark Shawl by Larka of the Fiber Tales podcast. And I did show you guys my start two weeks ago when I was down at the beach, but I did frog this and start it over. And I think I'm doing better as far as the laddering goes here. Since you start off doing magic loop with this, I have it on a, a ginormous cable here. So I really just can't wait for it to get big enough where I can um, just start knitting it in the round instead of doing magic loop. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. 
I will say this pattern is really fiddly to start off. There's six stitch markers distributed around like 12 or 14 stitches or something like that while you're trying to get magic loop started so it feels really clumsy at first but you just kind of have to power through the first mm, three four five six rounds <laughs> which they're fairly short and it's growing because you're doing multiple increases on those i did try to simplify things a little bit for myself on the center spine decreases I think on one side it's like yarn over the back and the other it's like yarn over the front. I think I made the opposite hand motions here. Um, but I, I'm just doing the same regular yarn over motion for both of them um, and treating them the same. I really don't think it's going to make a huge difference in how that increase looks along the center spine. Again, I don't know if I mentioned this is a color work shawl. Um, so it's worked in the round and then you steek up these stitches here on the other side. I have done the number of steep stitches that was recommended in the pattern, which is four. I think Naomi cast on a couple extra and she's also doing like a pearl ditch on hers. I meant to add a couple extra stitches in mine when I restarted this, but honestly it had taken me at least six tries to get this restarted properly. And once I finally got it, I was like, you know what? It is what it is. I am really not worried about it. I will make it work. And for the yarn, this is some of my Highland wool, and this is gonna be a new colorway called Putty. I haven't dyed any more up yet um, since I'm kind of preoccupied with advent calendars. And I, I apologize, I didn't bring my whole project bag up here. But the contrast color is Winterfell from La Bienne May on the Mondine base. So this has been restarted and hopefully that means that I will be a little bit more motivated to um, get some more rows in on this. So project number three that has been in the works is uh, my scrappy socks. Yay! I am pretty much done with the foot and the leg. I am going to do the black for the cuff and then garnet will be the heel. So I'm really pleased with how these worked up and I considered powering through staying up late to finish these last night but then I was like you know what it is what it is. I'm just going to keep enjoying the process here. These are all colors um, from last year's advent calendar that I dyed up. I have Sunstone, Strawberry Quartz, Smoky Quartz, Lepidolite, Alexandrinite, Sugalite or Sugalite, I'm not sure how you say that one, Peridot, so this is where I was on the last time you guys saw these, Amethyst, Chrysocala, Malachite, and then this is Onyx and garnet. So yeah, last year's advent calendars were crystals and gemstones themed. If you haven't been around, this year's calendars, all the colors are inspired by Impressionist paintings. So I'm taking a painting and creating a colorway based off of that. So that has been a lot of fun and a big creative challenge in a good way. Yeah, I'm really happy with how all those colors are coming together and starting to play with each other. So again, I like to do an afterthought or forethought afterthought heel. I just knit in that extra piece of yarn there so I can just pick up around that and take that piece out and then start working on my afterthought heel. So yeah, I love these scrappy socks. They're very happy and they came out a little bit different than I was expecting them to. But um, yeah, they're really pretty and I will be happy to add yet another pair of socks to my sock drawer. Unfortunately, I have not gotten any work done on Jason's Boba Fett socks. He's not super pressed to have them anytime soon, so um, I have a feeling once I finish my scrappy socks, I'll pick his socks back up and get them going. I do have plans for, <laughs> surprise, another pair of socks. Actually, I have lots of plans for socks. I have a whole bin dedicated to sock yarn over here and it has about 25 skeins in there. 
but the pair that I am most eager to cast on, and I've kind of hinted around this, we're going to jump into spinning now. I bought a braid of Superwash and Nylon um, fiber to spin up to knit a pair of socks. So this is the absolutely gorgeous skein of yarn that I spun up. And this is a three ply and a short forward worsted spin. I'm so pleased with how this looks. It is absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to get these started. And it's going to be, they're going to be funky and there's no way they're going to match. Um, one side of the braid was more this green and then the other side was more the purple. So I knew going into it that they weren't going to match. And again, that is not what I was not going for perfectly matchy, matchy socks. I'm also kind of documenting this progress. So I'm not going to go too much into this spin um, because I'm planning on making a full video kind of going from the very first stages of the spin all the way through knitting the socks and kind of how I like to knit my socks. But I just wanted to share with you guys this beautiful skein. I wound up applying this when I'm, we got home from the beach and I think that's really what kind of jump started my spinning mojo right now. I'm feeling very creative and um, for the first time since spinning, like, it's actually relaxing for me, which has always been a little bit relaxing. Since I'm such a new spinner, it's also a little bit stressful for me at times because I feel like things should be happening this way or that way. I don't know. It's probably utter nonsense. So once I finished my sock spin, I wanted something different. I wanted a palette cleanser. I wanted to spin something that wasn't fingering weight um, because this came out about a sport weight as a three ply. So the singles were considerably thinner than what I normally spin for a two ply fingering weight. So I went through my fiber stash and I picked out this bat that Naomi had sent to me, mm, I don't know, earlier this year. She had gotten this orange fiber that was a blend of merino and silk, I believe. There was about 20% of silk in the and the orange that she got. And then I sent her some of the cream Echo View or the just kind of natural undyed and she blended it all together in her drum carter. So she made me this nice large bat. I don't know, I think this probably came out to be over four ounces of fiber. And I have now done my first woolen spin. So that was really exciting and kind of addicting to to figure out woolen spinning. And I, I did this thing in like three days. So it's a bulky weight. It's about 90 yards. Um, but it's just so, so floofy and like squidgy and it's very orange. <laughs> it's very creamsicle-y. I think I'm going to knit a hat out of it. I may even do like a big chunky cabled hat. I've seen a few patterns on Ravelry that I think would work really well with this. The woolen spinning was just really refreshing um, after having done a worsted spin. Let me see if I can explain this better now that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so with worsted spinning, you're generally pinching the yarn or the fiber as you're drafting it and trying to squeeze out all the air to get a nice, tight, compact, fiber. Whereas with woolen spinning, you have just kind of this ball of fiber in your hand. Generally a like bat or Rolex are a good fiber prep um, for trying to do a woolen spin. So you're, you're letting some of the twist into that fiber supply, but you're still capturing a lot of air. So things stay a lot fluffier and bouncier. Maybe not bouncier, loftier. Maybe that's the word that I'm looking for. So that was a lot of fun. I feel a lot more confident moving forward for some of the kind of plans that I have in the back of my mind um, as far as doing woolen spinning to work with some commercially spun, commercially woolen spun yarn that I have in my stash. So that was a really great palette cleanser um, that ticked off all my boxes. <laughs> 
And while I was on vacation, I was texting with Naomi because um, she was she's been doing her um, spin for her Jupiter crop, and it occurred to me while I was out of town, <laughs> I have all of this yarn spun for the Dathan pullover, which Lord only knows when I'm going to get to that. And they're all kind of fingering weight. Some of them came out a little bit heavier, closer closer to sport weight. And I don't need the full four ounces of every color for the Dathan. So I was like, you know, I could probably just take from some of those skeins that I've already spun up um, for the Jupiter and spin up the Jupiter crop or start working on a Jupiter crop. Maybe just spin like the main color for it. And my light bulb moment. <laughs> So yeah, the whole time I was on vacation, I was sitting there scheming like, ooh, I'm going to go through my stash and see what works together when I get home and kind of figure out what I want to do with that. So I came home, I started digging through things and I had two or three um, skeins pulled out and they kind of worked together and I kind of had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to do like um, olive green as the main color. Um, but I wasn't really sold on some of these other colors that I had spun up working together. I googled olive green color palettes and this is a great tip if um, you have a skein that you want to work with, you're not sure if another color goes with it. Um, I usually will google, you know, olive green color palettes and see what comes up in Google image search or Pinterest is another great place to find color palettes to work from. Um, somebody's already done the hard work and figured out, you know, what complements each other and what's going to work well together. So I'll put a picture on the screen of the palette that I was really drawn to. So I'm thinking for the main color, it's going to be olive green. And then for the first contrast color, I want to use this skein of the beautiful ones from the John Arbin fiber that Naomi sent me because this one did come out closer to a sport weight. Then the second color will be this. I went on ahead and ordered some merino to spin up or to dye up and to spin up. So this will be my second color. So it's kind of that light melony green. I think this is gonna work up really pretty. I just got the rest of my fiber in yesterday, so I haven't dyed up the next two colors, but the next one's gonna be kind of that like mid berry pink color but yeah just kind of like that true reddish pink color and then the one that I wanted the most of contrast color number four will be that dark kind of eggplanty purple but I did go ahead and dye up a bunch of fiber in the main color way which will be this olive green now I have a minor tale of woe here this is a little sample scheme that I spun up within the last few days because I don't know how much you can tell here, if you can even tell, my olive skeins got a little bit felty in the dye pot. Um, obviously they're not unspinnable because I have this. However, it's not nearly as floofy and like, yeah, it just doesn't have as much body as this one that came out fine. So, um, yeah, as you can see, I can't really easily draft. I kind of have to pick the fiber apart and really do a lot of prep to be able to spin with it. But once I do that, it is spinnable. And I wanted to go ahead and spin up a little mini skein here to see it feels fine. I'm going to go ahead and swatch with these two just to be sure um, that they are going to you know, feel okay together. It does have a little bit of a felty feel to it, but it's kind of soft in a weird way. I don't know. It's okay. I'm just going to go with it. I don't really want to dye up another three ounces of fiber. <laughs> uh, so I was also happy to see that I was spinning this up basically at bang on a sport weight. This was around 40 ounces of fiber and I got 120 yards. So I'm good as far as spinning goes. And yeah, it's just not going to be fun to get through that olive green fiber, but it is what it is. So yeah, I think those, those kind of berry pinks and the eggplant will just look really gorgeous with this as a color work sweater.
It's also really exciting to go on ahead and get into a sweater spin since I still haven't knit with any of my hand spun. You know what, I guess this is a pretty similar color palette, isn't it? I'm. This must be like my fall color palette. <laughs> Alright guys, so that does it for the kind of making portion of things. I do have one or two other things that I've been working on, but not enough to really share and, um, you know, for it to be a significant amount of things to talk about right now. So I'm going to save those for next time. I am going to go ahead and announce the winner for the giveaway, and that is Chris Goble. And you have won the skein of Sheep Sheep Dipped Dye Works in the Salt Life colorway. I picked this up at the the Knit Nook down in Moorhead City, North Carolina. So if you will um, either get in touch with me on Instagram or Ravelry, um, or maybe just leave a comment down here below and I will arrange to get your address so I can get this out. So thank you so much to everyone who entered, who um, shared with us your um, favorite summertime pastimes. <laughs> a lot of people like to go swimming and go to the beach, which again is probably pretty high on my list. I really wish we had a better access to a swimming pool. I kind of want to go to Lake Lure, but not this year in the middle of COVID and all of that. So anyway, Congratulations to Chris, and again, a big thank you to everyone who has supported the channel or left a comment. You know that y'all support really um, is encouraging, and I love having everyone here with me to go on this little fiber journey adventure. <laughs> so that just about does it for me, you guys. Um, I'm working on a schedule where I'm going to be uploading these kind of sit down episodes every other week and in between I'm trying to pop up um, kind of not necessarily tutorial things but just the way that I like to do things in case you're looking for some of that information or um, you know you never know when somebody explains things a certain way that it's going to click so if you um, you know don't want to miss any of that go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Again, thank you so much for being here with me today and I will see you guys again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.